Welcome back down to the Chiefs Pit. Richie Petty, Mark Petty, Timmy Petty. Got a special guest in the house, Roger Watson. Worked with our dad back in 1970s when they won the Daytona 500 with Pete Hamilton. I'm going to shoot it over to Timmy. He's going to take over. So first of all, Roger, where are you from? Springfield, Missouri. And you started here in actually 1969. Is that 69, correct? yes. Because I, I was just a little kid, and I, I remember you probably from – I mean, I wouldn't say day one, but pretty quick. I mean, and then mom and dad would have you over for dinner every <laughs> once in a while and yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. But anyway, we're going to talk a little bit today about some of your exploits in uh, the 1970, 71 season, which we have a couple of examples of the car. So game. how did you get hired down here? Uh, make a long story short, I came for a vacation <clears throat> in uh, August of 69 and, uh, just happened upon this place and uh, stopped there at the uh, fence and Richard and uh, Bottle, I don't know what his name is. Uh, Uncle Bottle. Uncle, Uncle Bottle. Uncle yep. Bottle. Yep. Bottle. Yep. That's yep. the name. Well, I just, I just knew him as Bottle. Yep. Never knew how he got his name. They were unloading the truck and he came over and he said, Richard came over and he said, can I help you? It's after five o'clock. And I said, I just came to look at the place. He said, well, you can't see much sitting in your car. Get out. And... Uh, <laughs> Got out, went around and talked a lot uh, about it. And he said, what are you doing the next week or two? I was a two-week vacation. I said, well, I'm going to see the ocean, never seen it. And he said, well, come back in the morning. The boys start at 7 o'clock. And this is as far as I got for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that was a vacation. <laughs> that was a vacation. What a vacation, huh? And then I asked him, I said, uh, uh, when I got ready to leave, I, of course, I was, I don't know, 20 or 21, I said, how's the guy get a job here? He said, you got to ask. <laughs> well, I didn't ask. I scared he'd say no. <clears throat> and so I went home, and I paid the lady $5 uh, at the library. I heard of something called a resume. I don't, I don't have a college education. So I sent a resume to Richard. He called me, and he said, what's this thing? I told him. He said, you want a job or not? So I started in December the 1st of uh, 1969. Wow. That's awesome. So you were... You started when they were putting together the Superbirds. Yeah, but I didn't even know what the Superbird was. Well, yeah. they did, nobody did until they did that Ford stuff still here when you <laughs> the got The Ford it. stuff was still here. We had to uh, help them take a lot of the stuff out and take a look. <clears throat> we were cleaning up the engine room from Ford to, to Chrysler well, product was, then. I, I imagine you know, that was quite a big wow, job, wasn't it? It would be. I was I was overwhelmed because you got to consider I'm a boy from the Midwest that I just dreamed about this place. I didn't think I'd ever be able to work here. So yeah, it was it was unbelievable. Dad always told the story about when the Ford deal ended. You know all that stuff come from home to Moody, and said um, that grandfather made them give Ford back their parts, even though some of the rear end stuff and all could be used on anything or whatever they was using fittings and whatnot, but. Said that grandfather said they paid us to race that stuff. We're not racing anymore. They own took it, it back. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it all turned it back in. So, yeah, as uh, far as I know, there was a bunch of trucks. So you that, were probably a part of that. Yeah, part of that uh, and everything. So we've been digging around in the old archives down here at the Petty Brothers, the Chiefs Pit. We got dyno sheets that go back to, to 1970. That when Roger was helping run the dynos and stuff down here, and it's actually got his handwriting on a lot of them. So he was part of uh, getting ready to go to Daytona when Pete Hamilton won the 500 down there. So can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the workload y'all had getting ready for Daytona in 1970? We worked... Because uh, you're running two cars, the 43 with Richard and the 40 with Pete Hamilton. We worked 12-hour uh, shifts. We worked here, well, no, more than 12-hour shifts. We, we came to work at 7 o'clock in the morning, took a 30-minute lunch break, <clears throat> and then we left at... Uh, Five o'clock. Normally, we went down here at Frank's and and Larry's to have a hamburger or something. Then we'd come back and we'd work till ten o'clock, you know. <laughs> and we did that seven days a week. Wow. You know, we were, I worked in the engine room and uh, I never went over to the what I'd call the fabrication room or the frame room. I never saw the Superbird until uh, they drove one in and it was in the uh, Motor Trend magazine. All of us. You've probably yeah, seen yeah, the picture. Yeah, the, the That's the first time I'd yeah. ever seen it. And I, all we were doing, we were just working on the engines. And uh, John Coble was there and Frank Ruth and your daddy and myself. Wow. Yeah. And uh, 
you know. With, so we're going to push you up into the Daytona week because there's pictures of you in Victory Lane and all that. So how was the race week there? The race was great. Uh, we had, I won't mention their name, but we had some different uh, pistons uh, in, in Richard's car, and it normally pulled about five to ten horses more. And uh, the race got started. I forget where Richard said. I don't. I can't remember that. Well, let's answer the question real quick. Richard always got the best stuff, right? Yes, he did. Everybody questions that Pete get yeah. the best motor or Richard. He, Richard got the best motors. He always got the best motors. And normally they were anywhere from 5 to maybe 15 horsepower. We have a late. Let's be honest. It was Richard <laughs> Petty versus oh, no, no. no, no, no. I, I mean, who, who, oh, no, no, sure. no, no. I'm that, just saying. Given, yeah. The 43 was the that's money car. That's car owner. That's right. Yeah. That's, the, know, that's, that's, that's the money given. car. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Everybody questions that. Yeah. But that's so the that's what actually broke on the King's car in the race. On Richard. Richard's car in nine laps, the piston broke. Okay, I, and, and that's I, I, where the company was just beginning to get started, and uh, it, it broke. And your daddy looked at me, and I was scared to death. <laughs> you know, was, I normally watch a Southern Five. I mean, the Daytona Five Hundred. I'm not in the pits. And he turned to me and he said, "That damn thing didn't last very long, did it?" <laughs> and, that, and that that's was it. And about. now Pete's car had the regular, uh, in, had the regular pistons in it you know and that he lasted won the race right yes sir. yeah the rest is history yeah, yeah that's yeah. right that's, that's say. right yeah. well i got a little question that you know would anybody knows anything about petty racing they you know everybody hears stories about how harsh our dad was he was <laughs> me you know he was harsh, <laughs> intense <laughs> intense but that's why we like having guys like you on what what your perspective what was it like working for our dad what was it like working for the chief 1970, 1970. He was he was like a he was like a brother to me. Let me go back a little bit. I lost my father when I was 12, and uh, I got a stepfather, and uh, uh, my mom married him, and he was a mechanic, and he was very harsh, and now, but the guy that really taught me a lot was a guy by the name of Leonard Carr, and uh, I could read a mic and do everything by the time I was 18, 19. And uh, he'd, he'd eat your fanny out, and he would, uh, <laughs> Leonard wouldn't, he didn't know the word sorry, okay? Your dad would eat my fanny out, and he came up to me the first time. He grabbed me this way and was eating my fanny out. He said, uh, he came back about three or four minutes later. He says, uh, I'm sorry. I, he said, I'm sure you've never been talked that way. I said, well, you're right. I said, I've been talked that way, but I've never heard the word sorry after wow. it. So he had a big heart. He had a big heart, and he wanted to win, and you wanted to work for somebody that was that intense. So that was neat. Wow. That was neat. Okay. Um, well, we're going to move forward here. I like in four twenty six Hemi's yeah. Chrysler. Um, they, they, you said, and I didn't know this until talking to you earlier. But th these are the, the the bigger carburetors. What do you, what do you call these? The they call them the elephant carburetors. That actually were for a Ford. And for some reason, I, I found this out later. After I just thought they were just a Holly carburetor and all, but you call this a separate. Well, this is a 830 with the, the Le Mans Ford style bowls. Yeah, and this bowl for hood was, clearance. Yeah, this bowl was on that. Right, and, and I, mean, I don't have an example yeah. of that, but I just yeah. And, and, and look, look how big these holes are versus what they went to later which is like the 830 yeah so anyhow yeah that's that's, that's what a dump but 11 how many cfm's it 1200 1200 okay 1200 this is 830 CFM. yeah uh, and yeah these, repeat for a minute yeah th these are actual carburetors from that era so it's 50 years and, old right. and we had we had the snouts cut off like right that. right yeah. you know, more, more like this yeah but i mean this is what we had for example so. yeah well but that's what roger worked with when he was yeah. right and, yeah. and i didn't know that that i thought they had had went down to a smaller but you they did it with the plates underneath they or, did it with the, the plates underneath the like range. i say they probably went to a smaller one after i left yes sir but yes, sir. uh yeah. Now, on up into 71, did they run these as they well? They ran that one 71, and they ran it in 72. When did well, they go to the when, small block? 74. 74, 74. Yeah. yes, you're right. And they, they Well, the Rossi car actually ran yeah. the 305. He, he ran a 305, and he got better gas mileage, and something happened, or he might have won the race. Right. right. And I don't know what that was. But yeah. he, had, he had better gas mileage. But anyway, uh, the, the carburetor deal, that's... Um, I mean, it, it's, it's not much different than this to this day, but they, uh, the cup stuff, they have the throttle body with fuel injection. But 
anyway, it, the, these are more like what they did run. Yeah, that's what. And like I said, I didn't know because I was just a, a youngin, you know, yeah. a kid. So yeah, so, that, this is the first time I've seen the elephant carburetor with this on it. I, your daddy always ran these. Right, and and they did that for the hood clearance because the, okay. the motor was so big in the oh, compartment. Yeah. Okay. That that when you had the air cleaner over it. This would actually clear. And oh, that's otherwise right. It would not no, clear, it wouldn't these, clear there. The, the float adjusters. But I mean, I, I, I've seen the, the bigger ones with it, but we just don't have one. Wow. Okay. Left. No, that's great. That's good.